It's the Shabbat. Arise, 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 Israel, children of Yah. Praise Yah, praise Yah. Hallelujah. It's always a beautiful thing to be entered into His rest. Hallelujah. Let us greet one another always in the fear of Yah.
Glory, glory, glory. Praise Yah, praise Yah, saints. Praise Yah. We're going to hear and rehearse the law of love. Hallelujah. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, and out of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likes of that, which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I am Yahweh your Elohim, and my jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me. But showing love and commandment to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh Elohim to not, for it doesn't you know, punish you bringing the name to not. Remember the Shabbat set it apart. Six days you labor and do all your work, the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh Elohim. In it you are to any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor stranger within your gates. For six days you have heaven the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And rest of some day, therefore Yapless seventh day is set apart. Respect your father and your mother, the days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. Praise Yah. Everybody hear me all right? Yes, all right. Praise Yah. Another Shabbat. Hallelujah. And uh, quickly approaching uh, a festival that they call Salween. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. The Halloween ween of uh, the uh, people of this land. Hallelujah. So I implore everybody to be in prayer always. Because they say somehow, some way, the veil is thinnest during this time of the year. So spiritual things can pass through a lot quicker. You know, the witches, the wizards, and the warlocks are going to be on their toes. They're going to be praying. They're going to be open portals and no telling what. We'll see next year. Well, praise Yah, saints of the Most High, Yah. Thank Yah that we're in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that the law is written in our hearts and our minds. That's just a beautiful thing. Something to govern us. You know, now we're not keeping the law to be saved, but it's helping us in our salvation. We do the things we do because of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We you know it's none of our righteousness, none of our works that we can ascribe to. But in all things, we give thanks to Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our blessed Heavenly Father, in the wonderful name Yeshua, thank you for another holy rest day, Most High. Thank you for the time to come, hear your word, Most High, fellowship and sup with you. Thank you for all things, Most High. I ask your blessing upon the service today, in the wonderful name Yeshua. Hallelujah. I mean, you may be seated, saints of the Most High, y'all. Yeah. yeah, I'm very grateful. Hallelujah. To be in this life, to pass from death to life. Hallelujah. I think we all should be, uh, our hearts always should be indicted in this good matter. Hallelujah, saints of the Most High, y'all. Yeah. I thank y'all for His rest. That we actually have, you know, this privilege, this grace to enter into something, you know, each and every week. A recharging, a refilling, a, a, an invigorating, hallelujah. I thank y'all for his word, I thank his for his governance of his law. Wish a lot more people would understand this time, this frame that we're in, this covenant that we're in, a lot. A lot of bodies out there do not understand what we understand. They are not conscious of what we are conscious of. We should not take anything for granted, 
especially in this walk. Because we are appointed to a lot of things, and we read it. And we do read it. We are appointed. And that is good. It's a good thing to mature us, to get us home, because we're trying to get home. <laughs> Each and every day, I know, I know in myself how much stranger this world gets. We can look out on the horizon and look how strange it is getting. I mean, very estranged. And it makes me long more and more and more for home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where it says, by faith, again, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yah. And that is the beautiful thing that the Most High Yah in this time and his hour is trying to get us in the right frame of mind. To get us into the construct of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know, it's beautiful that we can look into the, these pages and step into Abraham's life. Step into David's life. Feel their sufferings. Feel their pain. Feel their misery. Feel their joys. And, you know, and they allow us to enter into this fellowship. They allow us to enter in through this word. And, and, and even in this fellowship, we should not forsake in our time and the hour what, what our brothers and our sisters aforetime went through. You know, this is appointed upon the ends of the world. They're, they're waiting for this thing to be complete. Waiting for this to, be com you know, to come to its fullness with us. Because the word says, they without us. So there is a perfect that's still being brought to pass. There is a construct in this word. Words. The communication, it's amazing that, you know, I'm speaking English. And I can pray in English. And I can meditate in English. And still the Most High Yah can reach to me in this very language. While some of the religious world, you know, are trying to force others into a Hebrew language. You know, we're, I don't know if we're ready for that body yet without the experience. Many people out there calling themselves Hebrew Israelites without no experience. They are into something that has no substance. But we are able to enter into something that has substance. Why? Because we are immersed in it. When you're immersed in anything, there is something about a testimony. There's something about the experience that happens within a being that he is able to give an account for. And we read many accounts of what our brothers and sisters went through in here. And we go through the same things. And many times we let them slip. And we should not let them slip. These are admonishments, teachings constructs for life for life for life hallelujah today I'm going to get into just a two letter word and probably after this I pray by the spirit of the most high Yah that this word you know will Resonate something different in you when you read next time. Two-letter word that has so much significance, has so much weight, has so much understanding when it's used. You know, we live in a world that takes a lot of things for granted. Sometimes we don't take time to sit back and meditate on a lot of things. You know, we got a construct out here that everybody's fast this, fast that. You know, I got to have it here now, right? This and there. Everybody's run, 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 run. Here with people, yeah, we should not be in that mindset, should not be in that construct, should not be part of that world which we was in. That slavery. Yeah, it's slavery. Of all things, the biggest slavery a lot of people overlook. And then the slave master, they really overlook him, the God of this world, Hasatan. We could talk about history and all the perils of history. And this, this set of people went through this, and this set of people went through that. Remember the Holocaust here, remember that. 
But who's remembering this time and this hour? Who is the orchestrator of all this murder, all this death, all this theft? All this bitterness and envy and jealousy. The greater war. The greater war. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Today let us look at a word called in. <laughs> and so you know, that's a simple word there. But it has a lot of weight. Especially to us that are in Christ. Especially to us that are in the way. In. You can say in many terms it expresses movement, it expressing movement, or it expressing a situation with the result that someone or something becomes enclosed. And like I'm saying, we are gathered here to hear the Word of God in a building. So you're enclosed within a building. So now on this side of the impalement, on this side of, of the crucifixion. The word says that now you are in Christ. You no longer in your former nature or should not be in your former nature. But something, someone or something becomes enclosed or surrounded by something else. And like as I talked a while back on words, how the things we allow to enter into our ears and enter into our hearts. And it's a construct in the way these words are presented to us. Like Pastor went over so eloquently and beautifully last week about the viper. What it was communicated from a viper. Words, 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 words. And then in according to what is in you determines how you will hear those words, whatever you believe, whatever disgruntlements, whatever hatreds, whatever bitternesses. And just like as the natural body, you know, if, if the natural body is kept healthy, kept up, kept clean, when something foreign goes into it, it has the, the, the quick reaction to vomit it back out. Now, what should be the same thing in a spiritual body? When something we're trying to bring into the ears of Christ, bring it into the eyes of Christ, into that body that sometimes we forget that is in us. And we should be at a spiritual healthiness, a spiritual fortitude as the people of Yah when we hear something outside of the constructs of that law, constructs of that book, constructs of the doctrine which we have learned, there should be some kind of an exhale, a vomit. Should be. But we see some who may have, you know, deep in the recesses of their being, disgruntlements, distaste, mistrust. And they don't know that's in there until certain words are said. And these things are awakened in them. All of a sudden they find a, a familiar spirit within them. All of a sudden, they didn't know it was there before. All of a sudden they got something that's harassing, driving, and tormenting. Because of just that one little phrase, that, that one little backbite, that one little slander. Come into the air, next thing you know, a world is formed. Well, without taking the battle to the gate, taking hold, you know, like the word instructs us. Take hold, take, take grab at every instance, everything that's entering into your mind. Take the battle to the gate. Eye gate, ear gate, mind gate, everything. And we live in a world and a time and an hour and it's getting increasing that people do not want to labor in any form. And this construct is blanketing the world. And this construct is sometimes summoning us. 
Because we're coming upon a season, a dead season of holidays where people are going to be thinking that a dead Roman Catholic bishop is getting his fat ass down a chimney. And you think about this and you sit back and like a read in Deuteronomy and these people are just ah, frolicking and playing and doing all this stuff to, to a God they know not. And if there was some new God that comes up this, this Christmas season, they will go and uh, give homage to Him. And the people say, no, no, we don't do it this way. Then why the hell are you doing? Do you sit back and, and, and take an inventory of why you're doing what you're doing at any time. A lot of people don't. They go with the flow. They jump into the current of the world and they get carried away with it. So this end, expressing movement or situation with the result that someone or something becomes enclosed or surrounded by something else. And I thank you the most high, yeah, to all, uh, it's a beautiful thing to have always your mind enclosed with this word. Because I know even throughout the day, if I just meditate on this word, that there, is a, there is a peace that still comes with that. I can be at work and there will be all kinds of crap, all kinds of drama here and there. But because my mind is on this, my mind is on this, my mind is on Yah. I'm kept. I'm safe. I'm at that pavilion. I can still perform all my day's labors by His strength and by His mercy and by His might. So at the end of the day, that labor of the day, I can, before I lay my head down, I have something to thank my Yah for. Yes. So I continually keep this cycle going in the construct of my mind till it becomes that sacred nature. So many of us have come out of the world and still dealing with these natures that, that must be broken, that must be severed, these bands and the, whatever, the chains and fetters that we don't think that is around our ankles and around our neck and around our eyes and around our ears. Got a construct here. Then you have people before you I guess, like the word says, knowing the terror of Yah, here we are trying to persuade you. Trying to persuade you. Trying to persuade our brothers and our sisters. And those that are in Christ, we're trying to persuade and edify. Get up here and, you know, and I can animate and do all kinds of stuff. But there is some kind of communication that should be coming from the Spirit of Yah to you to help you know a lot of stuff didn't come to our conscience unless it was preached or well, unless it was taught. And the ones once we received this word and we received it with joy, received it with gladness, then our eyes were open to that very realm. We could see a little bit more. We could hear a little bit more. Because we received Christ. We received the Word. We were still walking in His world. Walking in His kingdom. Walking in His dominion. Because He is a king. And what king there be throughout all history that didn't have precepts, laws, and statutes to govern His land. And for the people to live safely within that governance, they had to abide had to abide naturally. Same spiritually. When you understand the fabric of this world, it is, there's so much going on this time and this hour. It's amazing that we're not aware of. But I think the most high out through His Word that He's getting us aware. By words? Yes. Trying to get it in our minds and get it in our hearts. Trying to get us enclosed so we can start looking upon the horizon and really see what's going on. Luke 21 and 8. And he said, Yeshua said, 
Take heed that ye be not deceived. Because there's something about when you're planting seeds and you're putting them into the ground, you're sieving them. And this Hasatan and these words are there to come and to take that very thing which was sown and unsow it. Why, where we get the word deceived. Take heed that ye be not deceived. This says, for how many? Many. They're going to come. Chow. That's a unique word, huh? For the time then presence and for the time going forth. For many shall come in. Notice I got it highlighted there. How are they going to come in? They're going to say they're enclosed. And we can see this time in this hour. And the most high eye is getting our senses sharpened. Getting our perceptions higher. He is clearing up our eyes. Because I know many, and as I go on in these years, I still still feel and understand scales falling from my eyes. When the Most High I loves me enough and allows me that grace and that mercy to step into another understanding. Yes. Hallelujah. But he says, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. And many have come here saying that I am your brother and I am your sister. And it says, and the try and the time draweth near. And we're drawing closer than we were before. I don't know how much long this thing is going to prolong. <laughs> Woo! I don't know what the zenith of this wickedness this world is going to allow. See, I, I, I've been watching this one guy. He puts on, you know, weeks at a time all the weather anomalies going on in the world. And as we go on and on from year to year, the weather's getting weirder and weirder. Landslides here, all just all kinds of just weird stuff going on in the earth. And we know that the whole creation is groaning and travailing. And that's how it's showing it's groaning and travailing. And it's puking out. Why? Because it's waiting for us to manifest. It is. Because it, it, we know, we know, we know, we know, we experience what this bondage that we're in. We know what bondage we have been in. We know bondage we have been set from. We understand, you know, we look at this body and it look how temporal it is. You know, how much corruption that is ordained to it. And that is a testimony in ourselves. You'll be a construct in ourselves. I shouldn't trust in this mess. Because the time draweth near. And it says, Go ye not after them who? The many. We can see Christianity, the largest religion of the world. Why? Because many, many. Many, many. But they do banner themselves, huh? But you ask them what their faith is, and they say, I'm the faith of a Baptist. I'm the faith of a Catholic. I'm the faith of apostolic. And then they ask you the same thing, and then we come back, well... The faith that we live now in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of Yah, who loved us and gave himself for us. We live, you know, and our faith is determined upon Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the ones who immersed themselves from the beginning for our sakes that we ourselves could, could come in and, and, and enjoy the same immersion. But a lot of us don't like this immersion. 
A lot of pain comes with this immersion. A lot of suffering comes with this immersion. A lot of joy. A lot of peace. Also, we got to understand it comes with this immersion. There is a payoff. But if it wasn't for the sufferings, the trials, and the tribulations, how, you know, if that wasn't there, how much more, you know, how much would our joy be full if that was not there? How much, you know, could our testimony be solidified if we didn't go through these things that are there honing us and molding us and perfecting us? It is. And in all these situations, is communicating to us beyond words. And we got a construct there letting us know through every situation how we should behave. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ye not, therefore, after them. Last week we heard about the words of a viper and then talked about the words of a talebearer. It's amazing how much words can destroy. I mean, it just took words whispering into the first woman's ear to bring this whole epoch into, into being. And the serpent said, and, and hath Yah said. He spoke. And because he spoke, all of a sudden it went into the ear of Eve, and whatever was in her, something that was excited to be, all of a sudden, I'm curious. But we know by the word of Yah, things had to go this way. Because of what happened in glory. About a created being that was perfect in all his ways, full of wisdom. Rose up and said, I will be like the Most High. And because he said that within himself. Within himself. You know, this was in his being. This got him expelled. Got him cast out. Interesting, huh? We've heard about the viper. Titus 1.16 They profess. Notice that these pronouns that are used. You know, pastor at times said, there is a us, and there is a them. Yeah. And we've got to really get in our mind that that's the way it is. The Most High, uh, he ain't sitting there dividing, you know, a, an eighth over here and an eighth there and a sixteenth over here. No, he's not doing none of that. We, we learn from the Word, you know, hey, the left or either the right. <laughs> and the people voted with their feet. <laughs> Amazing. They profess... That they know. And a lot of these people think that they know. It's amazing. All these years that I've been walking and in fellowship with Yeshua. The, 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 the greatest problem we have, especially within this ministry, is religious people. Religious spirits. People think that they know. Been here two years. They've been reading, reading books, 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 and watching YouTube videos and this and that. And I'm learned, you know. And you got it. Uh, I'm looking at a cup sitting there before me, but nothing in it. No experience. That very word that you say that you think you know, have you been immersed in it? Has that very word tried you? And we've seen throughout the years, word come forth. Preachings come forth and it tried the people. And there was a shaking going on and we see many fall away. Because this very thing that was just broadcasted, words. 
and how it brought the dividing. No pastor didn't have to say, oh, all of y'all that have been, you know, speaking in other people's ear, go to the left. And all of y'all that have not received anything, you know, go to the right. No, he didn't have to do nothing of that. He knew that the wheats and, and the tares were all here. But the Most High Eye, is, he's faithful and just to send out his messengers with a word, and they speak the word and let the word start taking up the tares from the wheat. And it's a beautiful thing, you know, we don't see this actually going on in the Spirit. That words are that powerful. That light is that illuminating. That people, you know, have been walking in cloaks of maliciousness. And all of a sudden a messenger is before them and come out of his mouth the thing that is exploiting and bringing to out in the open the very deeds that they're doing in their body. And then they don't understand that thing which is rising up in them. That thing which is causing all this anger and all this bitterness is sin in them. And it is sin that's crying out. And it is darkness that is crying out. And then they fall away. And then they walk no longer with Him. But they profess that they know Yah, but what? In. There's that little old small two-letter word again. And what? You mean that in all that they're professing, there was nothing surrounding them, huh? Did not cast out no devils. Did not heal no sick. Did not raise no dead. Did not strengthen their brother or sister in a time of weakness. But they profess. They, they speak. Oh yeah, words only. They put on a suit that appears as though you know they are some holy thing. We can put all these teeth seats and, and put all, you know, you can have 40 pounds of stars of David all around your neck. Have one on your butt, on your feet and everything else. And you have all this garb on you. And you appear like something as the scribes and the Pharisees did. I mean, there, there isn't a count of it there. They profess that they knew Yah. And then right there, right there in front of their presence, Yah is standing before them and they couldn't see Yah. <laughs> Amazing, huh? But it says, but in words. Well, well, we fast twice a week and we do this and we do that. You know, and I'm not like that old, that old nasty stinking thing over there that's you know, bawling and squalling on his face. I don't have to do all that. But in the works, they deny Him. We went over last night that, that Yah is pleased by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What do you hope? What is your hope in this time and in this hour? What's your hope coming, going forth in the days of head? But in works, they deny Him. So do they... Uh, can faith be faith if it hath not a body? Can this body be a body if it don't have a skeletal structure within can it stand on its own without that skeletal structure? So what profit the outward thing? What's more of profit? That which was in or that which is perishing without? But in works they deny him. And how they deny, they, they, they're, they're, they're being abominable. And what? Disobedient. Wonder what they're being disobedient to. Huh? Works. And what is propelling them to do works? If the law is not in your heart, 
and the law is not in your mind, there will be no avenue for works. Because they are written in our hearts and our minds, it gives us the power to perform those things. Because if the law in the heart and the mind would not be there unless the Holy Spirit had taken up residence in this building. This building. But they're disobedient. Disobedient. And I guess, you know, the apostles and the disciples being full of the law, they went and do exploits, huh? Well, the law is the Holy Spirit. Okay, and Paul, being full of the law, did great mighty signs and wonders. That don't fit into the body that we see in this word, do we? No, that no. They're shepherd. They hear his words. And they go towards that. And it makes me wonder a lot of us when we hear things outside, these, these murmurings and these complainings, how all of a sudden we're running after that. In works, they deny Him. They don't do the work of what they, that they know, Yah, but they do the works of abominations. They do the works of disobedience. But when it, and then they say they know Yah, but what they every work, good work, they are reprobate. They're without judgment, they're without direction, without com in anything. No discipline. Jude 1 4 says there, for there are present certain men what crept where? In unawares. You know, these things were written for our admonition, for our learning. And I thank Yah in our time and in and, 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 and this grace that we're allowed to enter in especially in this body. I thank God that continually He's helping us to be not unaware. You know, it was just that word last week, a shot over the bow about vipers. And we remember last time it was preached, shot over the bow. I mean, it was broadcasted wide. And these... These ones who have crept in unaware became aware that we were aware of them. And because that word made it aware unto us, they had to leave. Because they could be clearly seen now. Ain't that something? If you just receive the word of Yah, if you would receive instruction, the law is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We want to we wanna describe ascribe the law into ten little precepts when it's a lot bigger than that. When Yeshua said it's built on two things, love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the second is like unto the first, love thy neighbor and thyself. And all this is fulfilled all, all, all. Well, why y'all have to do every Sabbath and get Israel up here and, and repeat this, this law over and over and over? You can tell that someone that is actually uttering that, that there's no substance in them. Whereas one, our brother David, many times you could hear him say, I delight in thy law after what the inward. I delight in. I can't delight out. And many people want to say they're delighting out. Certain men crept in unawares who were before of old. Nothing new. No new thing under the sun. But who were before of old, they were, this, this, this is construct, this was meant to be of old ordained 
to what? This condemnation. There's words in this book for blessing. There's words in this book for condemnation. But these men who crept in unawares ordained to a condemnation ungodly men. Why do you say ungodly? Because God, Yeshua, Yahweh is not in them. There's something else inhabiting that building. But they crept in unaware. Ungodly men turn in what? The grace. The grace. His love toward us. His mercy toward us. His favor toward us. His love toward us. How many of us had entered into this grace that we have peace with Yah? And one time we did not have peace with the Most High Yah at any time. And we can give a test of that. As Brother Kabir said in his video, now I understand peace that passes all understanding. Because I received the real Christ. I have the real Yeshua, Hamashiach, on the inside. But they're ungodly men. They turn the grace of our Yah, our Elohim, into what? Lasciviousness. Like the fat bullion guy. You're going to get out of the crazy place. And you know, his head all up in his torso and all, and all that crap. Turning the grace of our Yah into lasciviousness. And this, you know, this... This, to a lot of people that say they are Christ, this is a money-making thing. This is a profession of the world, that is. But they turn it into lasciviousness. And in doing this, they deny Yah and our Savior, Jesus Christ, in doing all this in works. 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 First John. 4 1 tells us, Beloved, and we are the beloved. There's only a few that are beloved. And he tells you to be loved. Let him love you. Believe not what? Every spirit. But what it says, and a lot of us need to get into that mode each and every day. I've heard brothers come to me and I try and I try and they keep doing this and I keep doing that and nothing happens. I say, keep going. Keep, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. You're sitting there like a limp, wet noodle. No muscle tone, no nothing in the spirit. And you're looking here at a hundred pound weight. And somehow, some way in the construct of your mind, you think Yeshua is going to come over there and lift that for you. It ain't happening. He gives you the keys. He gives you the strength. He gives you the know-how, how to grab that bar, how to pull it up, and how to press it over your head. Believe not every spirit, but try. We've got to do this on a continual basis, especially more the so as we get in, uh, upon this dead season. Because things are getting ready to get deep. Because everybody's going to be wishing everybody, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and then something in the background, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And they got their wish, huh? The most heavy spike of the suicidal rate happens in that time of the year. But it's merry and it's happy. So we got to do something for this flesh to make it merry. Got to do something for the flesh to make it happy. So we got to do all this reveling. We got to go by and, and, get, and hand presents one to another. And then when I get my present, I don't like what you gave me.
and, and the families are coming together, and I don't like my brother, and I don't like my sister. But Merry Christmas. And this crowd goes on. Oh, happy Easter. Happy Halloween. And I sit back and go, what the hell's happy about? Some damn demonic sacrifices. But these people have received this construct. So they go after the gods of this world. Something that Israel does not have a good report about going after other gods of the land. And we read all that and here we are at the end of this thing. And we should not be going after strange gods. Well, no, I'm not worshiping Isis and I'm not worshiping Thor and this and that. But are you bitter? Are you envious? Do you have hatred in your heart? Do you have revelings and, and, and fornications and adulteries going on in your being? Hmm. This thing goes a little deeper. As I remember one took this flesh, throwed it up upon a tree, put it up upon a tree and impaled it. So there's no more excuse for that flesh. Taking it out of the way. Now we can see clearly. All that time, all the shadows, bringing us into a, a more glorious time, looking in, and the prophets and, and all them are looking into what we're now immersed in. Wishing they could be part of it. They were living in the shadows. And here we are living in the image. And we are the body of Christ being conformed to be the image. Beloved, bleed not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, of Yah. Why? Why? Because many false prophets. What does a prophet do? matter if he's holy or unholy. He is a spokesperson for the, the mighty one that sent him. But these false prophets are what? Gone out. Where? In to what? But brethren, you're not of the world. You're in it, but you're not of it. You may be in it, but you're not of it. But these false prophets are going out into the world. So in any time, any chance when one has crept in unaware here, we should be on alert. And I thank the Most High Yah, He keeps us on alert. So the Word of Yah can be preached. So the Word of Yah can be pro pro propelled and broadcasted. So the light can be put on that ungodly being, on pawn that wicked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hereby know we and know ye the Spirit of God, Spirit of Yah. Every spirit that confesseth. And a lot of people in there, they got to confess Jesus Christ. But that's not the confession we're talking about. Many people out there are confessing, but their confession is not full. They have no works, as we talked about before. <laughs> Every spirit that confesses, you now we got spirits that confess Jesus Christ, came what? In the flesh is of Yah. And then, you know, in many aspects, that's our first confession. But after we're baptized in, in water and we're baptized in the spirit, therefore, even after that conversion, we know Him no longer after the flesh. And He wants us to know Him no longer after the flesh. That thing was put upon a tree, killed, taken out of the way. So we are without excuse. But many, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of Yah. 
Forget not, though. We can deny that Christ has come in the flesh when we reject our brothers and sisters. Come on. Our true brothers and sisters. The ones that are set before you to minister the word of Yah. We are your fellow laborers. We are your fellow servants. Like John fell down in his feet in the service. said, get up, get up, get up. You know, I'm just like you. But we, we forget this. We can't deny that Christ has come in the flesh when we reject our brothers and sisters and say Christ is not in them. And you got a lot of people out there with casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick. Then you got Roberts out there saying, No, no way you're not going to say the name of that damn pagan Jesus. And he actually seen a spirit of depression cast out of a, a damsel, a woman. And he blasphemed the Holy Spirit. See? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of Yah, not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof? You have heard. Heard? One thing we do, we do we hear? Words. Words. Words awaken us. Words made us conscious. Do you have heard that it, what should come? And it says, and even now, already, where is it in? The world. The world. And that's pivotal. It is in the world, so the, the, their whole encompassing thing is what is wrapped around them. You see what I'm saying? Being in, when you're in the world, what can you speak of? The world, because that's all that's before your eyes. That is all that's in your ears. It's surrounding you. So all you can give testimony to is what you're, you're, you're initiated in are dwelling in. But if you're in the body of Christ, your speech should be different. Come on. Come on, because these people we see many times, they are where? In the world. That is huge. Huge. But the Word says, Ye are of Yah, ye are of God, little children. And we are children. And have overcome what? Them, them spirits. Why? How can we overcome? Because greater is he that is where? In. And we've really got to get to that to a deeper understanding. Knowing that the greater one in us is greater than anything out in this world. Because a lot of people that fell away under the words of tail bearing and backbiting didn't understand that the greater one there was no greater one in them at that time. They denied the Holy One of Israel that bought them. Greater, greater is he that is where? In you. Who? The little children. Ye that are of Yah. Like Christ said, I in him... He in me. Being joint heirs with Yeshua of the same inheritance, we can say the same thing. We are in Him and He is in us. That should be our testimony. That should be the thing that we're surrounding ourselves with. Because the beautiful thing in this ministry, we have brothers and sisters that we can surround ourselves with. And I love it. Who wants to get away from that kind of life? That kind of love, that kind of security. <clears throat> Beautiful thing. 
Because uh, last week during service, I was coming from the bathroom, going to the sound room, and as I walk, I felt so like something snapped in my calf. You know, like rubber band, when it gets stretched too long, you just, bing! I felt that within my muscle. And I walked back to the radio room, sat down, and then pain immediately started setting in all over my whole leg. I called upon my brother, my elder right there. And I asked him, will you pray for me? I told him what was going on and everything. He laid hands on it and prayed in the name of Jesus. And I called, because I believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. And I know he can heal. We touched and agreed together. And the faith that we both have, by, by second day, I was up and walking. Because I was asking some, you know, ever had this happen? You know, throughout the week, you know, this thing, yeah, some people had had to get a cast put on. That, that is a torn ligament or tendon. And I thank y'all that I have a brother, a faithful brother there that loves me, and I love him. And I can call upon him and he can pray for me. And I can receive that healing. And as you know, these things we take for naught, we take for granted of the greater one that is in us. I didn't call for somebody out in the world, in the world. I call for my brother. You call for your sister. To get this spirit out or get this thing healed or whatever it is. I mean, it was... Because we touch it in the green, because we believe in the one and only true Elohim. And we have faith that matches one another. This thing that was hoped for in both of us has come to pass. It's the evidence of things not seen. <clears throat> Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But you don't understand my circumstances. You don't understand what I'm going through. Many of us do. And you won't receive the instructions of life. The construct of the world loves people being staying in their misery. There was a cashier talking about her, her dregs of fibromyalgia. And I told her, yeah, I understand what you're going through, you know. And the more and more you keep talking about it and how it's bringing you under, the more and the more that disease is going to have in your life. Because, you know, most of what you're probably going through is psychosomatic. You've received something in your head. You receive some kind of rejection. You receive some kind of bitterness or something somewhere, some way. And now it's manifesting in your body in this form. No matter, you know, what type of bitterness, what type of rejection it was. Now they receive the words of these spirits. And then these spirits come and take abode in the houses. And there's a billions and billions of houses out there for these spirits to dwell in. But, but greater is he that is in you. He, one, one, one. He's not many, he's one. When we were out in the world, we were a host of many. And he that is in the world, many of us still have this world view. And like I said, you know why we talk about world view? It's a lot, I hear a lot of people, all they talk about is what they're surrounded with. I even hear believers talk in this same way. When our speech should not be so. We should have a view of what we have been subjected to. The world to come. See, we don't understand that this, that this time, this little time that we're spending, you know, on this ball of dirt as believers, as children of Yah, is molding us and preparing us for the world that is to come. Because we got to understand we were not made for this world. We, as the word says and gives testimony, we are strangers and pilgrims and we're just passing through. Passing through. 
So we should not have this world's view, but we should have the view of the world to come. And if we have a desire, and if we have a hope in us, and if faith is the substance of things hoped for, it will be the evidence of the things not seen. Yet we have not seen Him. Yet we believe, but even in that believing, we, we are partakers of the blessing each and every day. Again, like dear Brother Kabir said, you know, I, I am I'm a partaker of peace. I understand peace in my life now. I thought I knew peace when I was in Christianity. But that peace was way over there on the outside. Until I walked up and seen the real Yeshua and received the real Yeshua. And now I'm surrounded with His Word. I'm surrounded with His life. And now I can speak of that very same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you know in the Word, they said they were not witnesses. They could not be witnesses until they were filled with the Spirit. And after they were filled with the Spirit, when the day of Pentecost was fully calm, and they received the Spirit, then they became witnesses. Now we can get online and, and, and order up a bunch of chick tracks and pass them outwardly. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot out there do. I'm witnessing for Christ. Here, have a pamphlet. And I'm like, okay, all right. First John two fifteen says, "Love," because it's a beautiful thing that the love which we now have in Yeshua is different from the love that we had in the past. I'm learning more and more. That the love that is in me is not my, nothing that I concocted. But it's something from His being. Something, something from His witness. Something from His sacrifice. That He desired the same love that was in Him that, that propelled Him to do all the works that He did. He desired each and every one of us to be a partaker of that same love. So He took flesh out of the way. And got all these religions out there. That still have him up on the tree and they don't go no farther. They still say in the land of the dead, land of the flesh. And that's all they can speak. That's all they can profess. That's all they can talk of. Love not the world, neither the things that are where? In the world. I don't know what things are in the world, bitterness. Hatred, strife, variance, emulations, you know, we think things of a physical nature. I'm not going to, I hate this monitor because it's sitting here in this world. I hate that camera stand because it's here in this world. I hate that chair I'm sitting on because it's not cushy and it's in this world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love what? The world. If he has all this love of the world, what happens? Love of the Father is in him. So if I sit here and look at this glass of water and talk to you about this glass of water and tell you, oh, how refreshing it is, you know. When you're thirsty, I can take a drink and my thirst is quenched and everything, but I ain't taking a drink yet. But I can tell you about taking a drink. Huh? But I have not, I have not experienced the drink yet. But now if I actually do some works that I'm professing, yeah. And drink this water, now I'm a witness to what I just drunk. Right? Right? That simple? Whoa! Flaw, man.
It says, for all that is in, all that is in the world. What is this? The lust of this outward thing that's perishing. Your appetites, your dreams, whatever it may be. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's a, that's, that's a lot of our problems. We're still living our life. And we've not entered into living his life yet. Many of us are, many of us are entering into Shabbat and think we are resting, but we're not entering into his rest. We're entering into our rest. I'm here on the sofa and I'm reclining. It's the Shabbat. Uh, but I'm still thinking about tomorrow. I thought, I'm still thinking about what happened yesterday. And, and if I don't pay this bill here, and if I don't do that here, and, 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 and I'm resting. Not so. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It, 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 this is not of the Father if you're a child. Father, be you as a be his children, huh? But is of the world. We have this consumer mentality and this thing out there in this world, especially in the cities. You know, most of our cities anymore is nothing but just a, a hodgepodge of businesses. Something out there to get in your back pocket. But they're all pertaining to the lust of this world. Come get your Whopper. Come get your Big Mac. And, and supersize it. Oh, all that is in the world, huh? Supersize it. No, I'm just going to supersize it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This consumer mentality. And in this time and this hour, I've not seen it at its zenith like it is now. And as time goes on, this thing is really, really rapidly going to be because there's a system coming upon this world, a mark that the people of this world are going to receive because they want to buy and they want to sell. But we, the people of Yah, we've been bought. We have been bought. We should no longer be on the market. And the only market we should be in is buying of Him. Gold tried in the fire. What is tangible assets? Gold and silver. But I'm not talking about like I say. I'm not talking about that though. Well, I'm talking. <laughs> but He is talking. Spirit is talking. Buy of me. Go, I don't know about fire. I, t I touch fire and it burns. Carnal man does not receive. Natural man does not receive the things of Yah. And I can attest and I can say hallelujah that I thank Yah for all the fiery trials. I do. I do. If anything's going to be made more pure, more strong, more solid, it's got to go through the fire. But I see a lot of people don't want to go through the fire. But I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. See my tonsils and my life. You know. Got all this outward adorning. Somebody coming in. Oh, I'm dealing, you know, with depression and I'm dealing with anxiety, well, I'll pray for you. Go thy way. Yeah, I'll pray for you later on. It's like all these ministries of this world. Just send us your seed faith money. Then we will pray for you. You don't think the religions of this world have bought on to this consumer mentality? You know, up in Elohim by the multitude of merchandise, this thing that slew, El that slew the Lucifer, 
The very enchanting of being covered with every precious stone. And, and seeing the light of Yah emanate from your build, be, being. And you look down upon your own brightness and get corrupted. And I see many people in this walk because they think they know something. And they trust it in their knowledge and their much, much reading of books and much YouTubes day and night. They delighted in their brightness. And then we see them cast out. And they don't understand what's going on. They say they're a witness. They know Yah. When this thing go, it comes to pass, they don't understand the construct of the word that this is meant to be so, to cast you out, to be ordained to this condemnation. But many of us are not ordained to condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation. That to them that are they're in Christ Jesus, who walk after the Spirit. Hallelujah. So that's consumer mentality. Boy, it's taking over the world. It's amazing. Online thing is the biggest thing going on now. Get online with a little effort. Click, 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 click. Oh, woo. You know, all the bright things, all the shiny things. I need this, I need that. Click, 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 click. And we are consumers being consumed. Why I say that? But if you, have, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed. That ye be not, what? Consumed one of another. And we've seen that much in this ministry. We've seen this come to pass. Because the viper. Walking about as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Be, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. A victim mentality. How many of us are bringing this victim mentality into this walk? This construct. Hey, you know, through bad life experiences, and some of us have been through some traumatic things in our past life, in the life which we live before we come to Christ. Through bad life experiences, we have concocted issues of trust. And a lot of us, you know, we continually are, uh, we are tearing and get, trying to get the, the feeling of the Holy Spirit and trying, you know, to walk this and to walk that. Well, we're not looking really deep, deep down in ourselves, in ourselves, and see where we have this issue of trust. Because there's something about this time and this hour and, you know, a lot of brethren, I've seen them, you know, they're, you know, we're praying for them and everything. And, and with their mind, they're trying to still stay in the moment. Trying to capture the moment. Trying to, you know, to, with the mind and with their own perception, to, you know, to try to dissect and to see what's going on at that very minute and that very hour instead of surrendering. And it's because of issues of trust, because... And somewhere, somehow, in a bad life experience with a father, mother, brother, or sister, all of a sudden this superfluity of naughtiness is showing up itself and being a block for Yah working in you. This is a hindrance to letting Yah work in us. And I see this a lot. We should let Yah and should be letting Yah guide us through experiences. He said, I have walked this walk. I have been in this flesh that you have been in. I've been tried on all points in every matter. You know, because I loved you enough to, to subject myself to this, to immerse myself to this. Now I give you power. I give you escape wherever you fall into temptations and trials. But if we have issues 
of trust? How can He lead and guide us? How? And in many ways, we give place to a whorish mind. And that's not taking every thought into captivity. Some of us, you know, have sometimes eight lanes, ten lanes of thought going on at the same time. And we don't know how these things throw us on our back and go into us and have intercourse with us. That's what a whore does. You don't know who her lovers are. He lay down at every beckoning. And it's the same thing with our mind. This mind was in us, which is a single mind, which is a single heart. There will be no place for whoring. You know, many times Elohim, Yahweh, had to deal with, with a whorish nation because they were subjecting themselves to all the gods of the land. <coughs> and many times they didn't know who they was worshiping. They just subject themselves, they just humble themselves and let the gods of the land do what they will. Them. We should not give place to this horse mind. Because this horse mind is in the world. There is a whore upcoming and probably is pretty much on the scene now. She has sent out her false prophet and speaking many things. As the whole world is drunken with the wine of her fornication? You mean her deeds of this unlawful acts that she's doing, it has a byproduct that she's, she's publishing? Whew. Pray that we be not consumed with a whorish mind that this world is given out there. I, this time, this hour, I've not seen, you know, you take things back 10 years, the mental anguishes on this society now, back then is not like it is now. And the heightening of mental illnesses is just, woo, way up there. Now these people are just humbling themselves to everything that comes into their mind. Words? Words? 1 Peter 4, 1, For as much then as Christ hath suffered, for who? And how did he do that? In the flesh. He says, arm yourselves likewise. With the same mind. What mind? That Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. That we should prepare ourselves for the same thing. For he that hath what? Suffered where? In, not out of the flesh. A lot of people think they suffer out of the flesh. A lot of people out there in the world are suffering out of the flesh. But if we have suffered in the flesh, we have ceased from sin. And that's why we need to look at suffering, not from a world viewpoint, but we need to look at it from a Christ viewpoint. Because He loved us. Love. Love. Love propelled Him to suffer. Love propels us to suffer one for another. Love propels me to get up here and animate and act a fool and, and, and try to bring our consciousness into being, into, you know, into understanding of this word of Yah. So we can let this word work in us. Let this word be like a sharp, two-edged sword cutting asunder soul, spirit, 
so that we can cease from sin. Like Paul at one time said, you know, I don't know what's going on, you know. I know how, what to do. I know what to do good, but I don't find myself doing it. And, and, and then when it's present for me to do good, I find myself not doing it. And, and then and all of a sudden I say, whoa. 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 Who? Who? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he says, I, I, he come to, he shook himself. And he come to full, full realization, full consciousness. I thank my Yah through Christ Jesus. That with my mind now, that thing that's within, I can serve the law of Yah. But now I've come to an understanding and I, I can walk in a realm of peace. Now my flesh is going to serve the law of sin. So many of us, oh, oh, eh, ah, ah. and all of us are getting deliverance for the wrong thing. I looked at a woman the other day. I looked at her butt. Oh, I got to get deliverance. Come on. I mean. Is it harassing, driving, or tormenting you? Man, but because you had this one little altercation, I've got to get deliverance. You know, even Paul had to deal with it. He said, yeah, I understand my flesh now. It's going to serve the law of sin. But there is a part of me that is real. The part of me that is eternal. The part of me that is everlasting, it's going to serve the law of Yah. And we've got to come to that realization because we're fretting over the smallest things. I don't, I don't know why that mosquito bit me. I must have done something bad. I don't know why that dog's barking at me. I mean, come on, what's in the construct of our, what is in us? Arm yourself likewise with the same mind for he that has suffered in the flesh. And we must understand suffering is for us and not against us in this walk. We got to love the fire. Yes, because we know what that fire is, then we are conscious. And we receive the word of Yah with gladness. Yeah, and we receive that, the true suffering, the real suffering, the suffering of love. Now it gives us true focus. Why? That he no longer should live the rest of his time. Where? In the flesh. For a lot of us, we have lots of years of living in the flesh. Now it's time to put on the Spirit and live life in the Spirit. But we should not longer or should live to the rest of the time in the flesh, what? To the lust of men. But now to the will of Yah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 4. Verse Peter 4. Verses 12 through 14. Verse Peter 4, 12 through 14. And it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you. And a lot of us say, I don't know why I'm going through this. And I don't know why I'm going through Like I said before. And the Word is telling us, don't think it's strange that you're going through this. You're appointed to go through this. Let this be your peace. Let this be your strong fortress. Let this be your feet set upon a rock. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But rejoice. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ, 
sufferings, that when His glory, when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And it says, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, and it says, you need to be happy. Be happy. Well, you know, I received all this truth and I'm walking in newness of life and I went to my family and tried to tell them, you know, my joy and the love which I received and they rejected me. Oh, nobody knows trouble I seen. And we give testimony to that when we should be happy. We've done our works. We know not due diligence. We've tried to give our testimony that has been revealed into us. And the word says, if they say, don't receive it, walk on. Dust the feet off and go to the next house. We know many of us are, oh, I don't know why. Why Uncle Toby or Uncle Fester is not receiving the word of y'all. If only, if only. Move on. Move on. Don't worry about Uncle Toby and Betsy or whoever it may be. If they're not receiving you, it's not been for them. And we get so more tore up about that than, than receiving the big family that the eye has given to us. And we don't want the hundredfold. We want Aunt Bessie and Uncle Fester. We want him to, to be received into the kingdom. This is, you know, the preacher of the world peddled. Well, since, you know, they done gave him $500, he, you know, he can preach so-and-so into the kingdom, you know. Or you can go to the Catholic church, you know, and you, you want to go out here and lay with some uh, nasty-ass woman. And just give an indulgence, you know, and it'll be all right. Just give it to the priest. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll absolve you. Oh, nasty. Nasty. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of Yah resteth upon you now. On your part, he is evil spoken of. But on their part, it says he is spoken. Let me correct that. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. See, we need to change our perception, our way of thinking, our construct. And we, we too much of perceiving things from the flesh and not receiving things from the spirit man, but it's within Again, 2 Peter 1, 4 through 11. It says, Whereby are given unto us the redeemed, the children of Yah, exceeding great and precious promises. Why? That by these ye might be partakers. Why? Of the divine nature. That's not something that's going to be given to the flesh. That's something that's going to be put in the spirit man. And whatever is put in the spirit man, whatever is put in, this thing will animate. This thing will show the works thereof of what's on the inside. That's what they miss about the law being on the inside. About his word governing. I thank Yah for his governing word. Hallelujah. Whereby are given unto us great, exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. How, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, that is through lust. And it says, and beside this, you give all diligence, giving all diligence, and to your faith. Now, if you want to, to, to strive, if you want to put your energies into some, your volitions into some, put it into this. Let this thing surround you. Let this thing be what you're encompassed in. In. 
in, 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 in. Given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And then when you got this virtue, now add to your virtue knowledge. And then when you've got this, then, 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 and then they add to knowledge temperance. A lot of people, they get a lot of knowledge, but they're puffed up. One thing about the beautiful spirit of Yah, He will reveal things unto you, but at the same time, He will keep you humble in that knowledge, and that is truth. That is life. To knowledge, temperance. And then when you've got this, and to temperance, patience. And then when you've got this, you add to patience, godliness. And then when you have reached this realm of godliness, and you have attained it, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to the end of this, and to brotherly kindness, charity. And it says, as if, for if these things, what we just read before, be where? In. Two letter word, in you. And then they, they abound. They, they're just, they're, you're so compassed about them because they're in you. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Master and Savior Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. If you lack all of these, you're blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And it says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Solidify it. For if you do these things, what we read before, ye shall never fall. And for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you in doing all this abundantly in to the everlasting kingdom of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. Enough said on that. That is a lot even to meditate on that there. Adding, adding, adding. We find so many times we're adding to our bitterness hatred. And we're adding to hatred, dis disgust. And the spirits of the world would love you to do so. Be a building for them, huh? Be consumed by the consumer. What is in you? What is in you? What is in you? Many times I see myself come short. See myself fall? I have to sit back and say, well, now what in the world is in me? You know, I don't look, you know, on the outward thing. No, I've got to look to where it originated. I've got to get to the genesis of this matter. I've got to research this. You know, well, I've got to repent here, and I've got to ask for forgiveness there. Not because the other day I looked at a woman's butt, and I, oh, I've got to go get some deliverance. And a lot of people are, are going this way and think they're getting deliverance and they're still struggling with the same thing. And another thing, you love your sin too much to walk away from it. That's a big thing with Campanelli. So many sessions of trying to cast out that homosexual spirit out of him. But he loved his sin too much. He was incapacitated. That was his world. And he wonder why he could not be partaker of the world which we were walking in. And we were many times trying to give it testimony of this world to him, but he couldn't receive it because of the, the, the present world that he was walking in at that time. What is in you? What is in you? It says, well, we must all appear. All appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done where? In his body. Woo. According to that he hath done. 
whether it be what, good, or bad. Done where? Because it's got to start in before it manifests out. The thoughts and the intents of the heart's going to be judged. That's what's in the body. That's where the judgment is. We think we somehow, some way can judge somebody by their external manifestations. Well, if a preacher is up here and he's looking like a minister up here and he's looking angry and he's rebuking and reproofing like fire, and we look at his external manifestations and we say he's angry and he has no love and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And we do that. Especially if there's sin in us. And we want to protect that sin. If we want to shield that darkness, all of a sudden the light's shining bright and we want, we're running and scurrying like Adam during the cool of the day when y'all desired to walk with him. Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told? Did we read in anything at any time anybody told him he was naked? How did he come to that understanding in his mind then? Hmm. Things done in his body. Who told you you were naked? And then he's eating the next course of action. <laughs> Where did he learn that from? Did y'all teach him that? <laughs> Do we have any discourse or any readings in there where Satan took him aside and said, you know, now that you know that you're like little gods, you know, you got no, you're naked. You know. <laughs> I mean, look at it. I mean, you look awful. You need to put some clothes on. I mean, yeah. We don't read that in there. What happened? What happened? Who told you that they were naked? Come on, saints of the Most High, Yah. We are to retain Yah. Where? In our knowledge. Let's go to Romans and read to those that did not retain Yah in their knowledge. In, in, in. Big word. I know from this point on we'll probably look at in a little different now. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 28 says, And even as they, there's that word they, they, even as they did not like to retain God, retain God in their knowledge. What, did, what happened? Yah gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And because they did not like to retain Yah in their knowledge, and they were given over to a reprobate mind and did things which are not convenient, they were filled. Filled. Filled just as this cup is filled with water. Just as they didn't want to be filled. And retaining Yah in their knowledge. Hmm. Water is in the glass. The glass is holding the water. And because they didn't want, you can say this glass is knowledge, and they didn't want no water in the glass. Empty. Empty. Now since the glass is empty and it's staying empty, it means it's an open vessel to put something else in it now, huh? And they got this knowledge and they retain yarn the knowledge to have this glass full to where we would not receive any more. What happened? Yah gave them over to a reprobate, what? Mind. In, in the mind. To do those things which are convenient. These things happen from the mind, the genesis of the mind. They were filled with this, being filled with all unrighteousness. Being filled with all fornication 
being filled with all wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Yah, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. And these people who, knowing the judgment of Yah, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do they do the same, but they have pleasure also in them that do them. That's why they collect together. That's why vipers know who to go to. They know which ears to speak in. And if you present yourself as an empty glass for them, in the Spirit, what are they going to do with an empty glass? They're going to fill it. But that they see you fill with the Word of Yah and with the knowledge of Yah. And, and Yah's in that knowledge. They can't come to that house and put nothing in that glass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Christ is in you, your speech will always be different. And I'm talking about not only what this tongue speaks, but what, how we act, how we perform. Colossians tells us, let the word of Christ dwell where? In you. How? Richly. And this word needs to dwell with you in all, in all wisdom. I mean, if we got this, we're all surrounded by wisdom. And then we're surrounded by the word of God. Just think of that protection, them walls of protection. And, 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 sitting there, and when you let the word of Yah, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, then you go forth teaching and admonishing one another. How? In psalm, hymn, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace. Where? In your hearts to the master. I find myself sometimes during the day, he's my Yah, he's my king, he's my master, my everything. That's why I see hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. He's my Yah, he's my king, he's my master, my everything. Now this is in me. And you know, all the time when I'm singing and I'm praising, giving him glory, and I don't care what's going on around me. I'm impenetrable. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to do within ourselves in any time when we need strength, when we need comfort, we need peace, just strike up a hymn. But if you ain't got no songs, you know hymns in you. Just be like the Baptist. You open up an outward book, turn to page 30. Amazing grace. How? Sad, sad, more rich, like me. Jesus. <laughs> Two different manifestations, huh? An outward song that has no substance. Then an inward song that is continually adding substance. Hallelujah. Because I can sing with melodies and songs in my heart. Because, you know, I, I'm walking in truth. And because I'm walking in truth, I know that now my Master, my Savior, has no greater joy than to hear that His children walk in truth. And because we're walking in truth and He's in joy... Then the joy of lo, lo, the Master, the Savior, is our strength. And we come to these realms of weakness and we think weakness is some overcoming thing when it is strength. When you let Yah surround you like a good father, like He would for His children. Many of us have got children in here. And if we see any hostile threat, any bad happenings, we will surround that child, won't we? 
Most high I, he loves us. He surrounded us with the blood. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. For what have I to do to the, judge them also that are without? Who are we? And we find ourselves so perplexed. Why are the wicked doing that? And why are they doing that? You know, even David had a psalm, you know, he sees... He said, I see the wicked prospering. You know, they're getting more wicked, wicked. It looks like they're, they're gaining more and more and more. And we find ourselves, you know, in our jobs and in our circumstances and we go out shopping or whatever we may do and we see the people of the world doing what they're supposed to do. Don't worry about it. Who are we to judge them? Who are we to judge them? <coughs> like Paul said to well, what have I? Paul said, what do I have to do to judge them also that are what? Without. without. What do I need to judge them without? Do, do we not judge them that are what? Within. Within, and we should. But we find ourselves so wanting to judge them without so much that it brings us down and brings us into chains and brings us into fetters. Well, what do I have to do with them that are that are without. Don't, don't we have an, uh, enough to judge them that are within? Don't I have enough time dealing with what's within me and judging my own self, whether I be in the faith? Why am I to, taking all my energies and judging them that are without? It says, but them that are without... Yah just, oh, I can, whoo, whoo, I can sit down. I can rest now. I don't have to worry about them because Yah's already judged. Why? Because I received his word. He's already said it. It is written, it is written, and I believe it. Now I can rest in that, now I have peace. But them that are without, Yah judges. Therefore put away from you, from among yourselves, that wicked person hallelujah. hallelujah what is in you what is in you praise you saints of the most high y'all <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah I thank y'all for the privilege again to be just used as a vessel and we should always be thankful as each and every one of us ministers one to another to use one to another. It's so like I give testimony of me and Elder Becker, which is a beautiful thing. I can walk today because of, no, because of y'all. Yes. Y'all and us both, because we have the same mind. We understand the same construct. That way you know that, that Yah is pleased in this faith which we we, we have lifted up toward him. He is able to perform that very thing which we asked of him. Hallelujah. 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 And I thank y'all for his healing. We all thank y'all for his healing. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed Heavenly Father, in the name Yeshua, thank you again for another day of resting in your rest. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your guidance. Thank, uh, thank you for your life. For your life is keeping us and has kept us. Give you all honor and glory in the blessed name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you all.